G'day guys, welcome back again. I'm still on my little experimenting with um, trying to get less cells and more plain background rather than just a million tiny little cells that I'm getting from Floetrol. Um, now I thought I'd also talk to you a little bit about these cards that I use. This is a 30 centimeter by 40 centimeter or 12 by 16 inch compressed cardboard. Um, I just use them to practice on or if I just want to do a quick little pour and I don't want to use a huge canvas I, I do these. Um, they're, they're, um, they're great to use. Um, if you're in Australia you can buy them through eBay. You can get them a similar thing just a hard um, what should say a thick paper from office supply stores. Um, try and get at least a 450 gram. I have used a 350 gram. Um, it works as well but sometimes it warps a little bit if you've got um, paint on there it sort of bends a little bit. So try for the thickest one you can. Um, similar to Upo I think it is if you're in America. Um, like cardstock. Just check, check your art supply places. You can also buy them in a big um, like a pad and you just tear one off, especially made for painting. So if you can't find cardboard like this, go to your art supply and just buy those pads that you can tear sheets out. Go for the thickest one you can. I'll show you what, how I store these. Try not to spill my paints. It's just these um, clear display books and I just I keep them in here. I don't know if you can see that or not. So, lots of pores in here. Should put it that way actually, then maybe you can see it a little bit better. Lots of experimenting, lots of pores that I've done. Um, so, anyway, you can have the A3 one. Or if it's a bit easier for you to find the, the smaller ones, the, the A4 size, um, you can do that. And just keep them in these um, display folders. I always write on the back what I've done, um, the paints I've used, the pouring medium I've used, the um, measurements and everything. And I, I weigh everything on my kitchen scale, so I'll write it all up on the back of those so I've got a record. Okay. Back to pouring. So my last pour I did two parts Floetrol, one part PVA, half part pouring medium. I've increased it to three parts Floetrol. Um, I think it was a little bit thick last time, last pour. So that's the Floetrol. The PVA glue from Bunnings. I don't know how it compares to Elmer's glue. I've never tried Elmer's glue. Can't get it in Australia. Um, and pouring medium. I've just used the global one because that's what I bought on sale. So I've mixed um, my paints three parts pouring medium to one part global and I'm going for some ocean colours, greeny blues. Um, deep sea is this green one here and we have deep space, my favourite navy. Um, and then I've got coastal turquoise and I have some antique, oops, wrong one, antique silver, metallic, marina, which is a light bluey colour, and then I have my black and white as well. And I'm going to use coconut milk hair serum, just one drop in each colour except for the black and white. Um, there's five colours there, I'm really not going to need five drops, maybe I won't do this metallic as well. I'll just do the, the four colours. So just try and get a tiny little drop in. You don't want to drop followed by a stream because that ends up being two or three drops. Excuse my dogs barking. I don't know what they're barking at. One little drop. Okay, so four drops in the whole pour. I'll give that a good mix in. Coconut milk hair serum is really quite thick. And I want to spread it out. I want it to be dispersed in my paint, so giving it a, a good stir. If I had lots of drops in there, 
I might um, only stir a couple of times. This one's feeling a touch thick. I'm just going to add a couple of drops of water. I don't normally use water, but if I need to thin something, I will pop a few little drops of water in. You need to have all your paints the same consistency so that the paints flow well. So where the paint hits the other paint, it sort of leaves a bit of a, a trace, a bit of a squiggle on top before it disappears. Okay, uh, three cup flip using these colours. Let's do it. I haven't used this combination before. I know I use blues and aquas a lot, but I'm just throwing in a little bit of the sea green and some silver. So, see what happens. That's Zoe. Can you tell the which dog's barking from <laughs> their voice. People say to me, how do you know it's Zoe? It's like your children. You know which child has which voice. You know which dog's barking by the sound of their, their voice, so to speak. And a little bit of this light blue next. So getting cells, which is nice to see. A little bit of black. Don't want to overdo it with the black. It's not a mass of cells, which I would normally have by this stage if I was using plain Floetrol. I've got the PVA and I've got the pouring medium, so hopefully that will uh, down the flow troll a little bit and I won't get those massive tiny cells. I don't mind them so much on a swipe where I get lots of the tiny little cells on a swipe as well as my big cells but I don't really want them in my flip cup. I want a little bit more background. I'll do is soon is make up um, a pouring 101 video where I show you how I mix and measure up all my paints. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. How it's all done and from go to woe. These global paints mix in really well. They're a nice creamy smooth consistency. Lovely to work with. I'm not using up all my black. I've still got probably half the amount of black left. And I'll use that just to fill in my corners or between my pores and my flip cups if I need some space to fill in. And I'll use the black. I will, however, um, thin the, the black down just a touch because as a filler, I do like to have a, a thinner paint. It just helps the, the main pore flow a bit better. Okay, so all the same colours, but slightly different amounts in each cup. So we're going to get a little bit of a different pattern. And I'm just going to pop a little bit more of my pouring medium into the black just to thin it out to use as my filler. Okay, well, that looks pretty. Hope these colours turn out well. Whoops, gone over the edge. Cells already, look at that. So that's a good sign. Although there's lots of tiny little cells as well. Oh well. I'll just have to be happy with 
my tiny little cells. See what happens. Just give those a minute. Let the paint run down. The heavier paints are going to sink to the bottom, the higher density paints and the lighter density with the coconut oil will come up to the top and that's what's going to create our cells the different layers of paint all right let's flip so i'm going to pull them down to cover the card When you've pulled down, um, don't let the paint drip in the centre and don't swirl it in the middle. Keep that nice linear pattern. Oh, that's looking pretty. Look at that. Still got lots of tiny cells though, but oops, losing some of that off the side. Don't go over the side. I need you. Number two. Last one. Pretty pretty. I'm liking these colours. Now I'm going to use my black. Just while the paint's sitting there, the as I said before, the lighter density paints with the silicone oil is rising to the top. And while that's happening, I will put some of my thinned out black just on all these little bald spots. Just to help the paint when it's flowing to flow over the edge. If this black was quite thick or the same thickness as the paints that were here it might actually prevent the paint from flowing with ease and it might sort of have a little bit of a the black may cause a little a little step and then the rest of it's not going to want to go over it so that's why I thin it out I found it works easier especially if you're doing um, a ring pull you know those um, multiple ring pulls that you put in the middle and then you tilt and you tilt and it elongates and looks like timber? Especially with those, you need to have your, your fill-in colour really thin so that those rings can flow nicely. Okay, uh, let's get to tilting. Move my empty cups right out of the way. Now most of my paint seems to be, well, it's pretty equal, the, I'll get rid of this, I don't really like that so much, so go that way first. And I'm not going to torch yet because I've got plenty of cells. I'm trying to encourage this middle bit to flow a bit better so I'm just tilting up on a bit of an angle to get that middle bit to flow. Didn't want to lose that big one, but it's gone. Okay, um, try for this little corner here. You have to be careful not to leave too much paint on your surface. So if you think you've got a lovely design and you leave it, if you've got too much paint, um, the paint will keep spreading and want to move and you'll lose your cells, you'll lose your composition. So you do need to get a lot of the paint off. See, I'm trying to go for that corner and I'm getting this curve here. But I don't like all this plane in the corner there. 
So I'll just take a bit of that off. Didn't want to lose these little cells here either. So, oh, look at my pretty runoff. Turn that around. Now this mix, I can already tell, is thinner than my previous mix, which was two Floetrol to one PVA. This is three Floetrol to one PVA. It's, it's moving a lot more. The curves are happening more. The previous one, I had more straight lines. It wasn't curving as much. So I just need to try and get the curves back. This here, I'm going to try and get that down. So the only way I can do it is to move it down and across it the same way at the same time. Try and get those to straighten out again. Okay. Right, that will do. Now let's try for this side. Nice and slow. I don't want to lose that big beautiful cell there. Try and keep it. I don't want it to elongate too much. If you saw my um, four cup flip, four flip cup I should say, pour in purples, um, you will have noticed that I had huge cells, they were about two inches long. And it was just too big for me, I, I didn't like the shape, they got all elongated when I tilted. And I didn't, didn't have any PVA in it, the PVA seems to hold the shape of the cell a bit better. I'm just trying to get this amount of paint here. There's a lot of weight in that paint, so I'm trying to get it to go up here. I've got a lot of paint on here, so my colours aren't stretching out too much. I won't worry about that black corner. I'm just going to get this bit over, and then that'll be it. So I don't want to lose too much. to this side here, hopefully, without damaging too much of the composition. If it's going to damage it too much, I'll leave it. It's going to bring the weight of the paint back to the centre. No, I'm going to just leave it. Because me tilting that way is going to distort all of this, so I'll just leave it and have black corners up here. Right. Cells are starting to elongate here. I guess I could have had a bit more paint in my cups. That would have prevented that from happening. Okay, now I'm going to torch. I'm liking these multicolored cells up here. My pale blue one's still there, using my little blowtorch from Bunnings. And let's see what's going to happen. Popping bubbles first, nice and high. And then I'll get down a little bit lower and see if I can get some cells popping up. a minute for those cells to come up and have a chance to grow. Lots of little white ones popped up here with the silver in the middle. Would have liked to have covered my corner but it doesn't matter. I'm not going to ruin the rest of it just for one corner. If I'd had more paint in my cups, then I would have had more chance of moving the paint around, covering the whole thing while the paint was still really thick on the card without losing cells. So I probably should have had a little bit of extra paint. Next time. So I'm not quite sure what I think of all these colours together. 
The silver's kind of looking a little bit brown, but when it dries, it will be nice and shiny and metallic. So, as I said, I wanted sort of like an ocean look. Blues and greens, which I think I've got. It doesn't have to be bright and in your face every time you do a pour. You can have some muted colours. I'm going to do an, <laughs> a bright and in your face one next, actually. Oranges and reds and yellow. So I've got a lot of cells up this end. Not much down that end. I'm just going to move this a touch, just a touch, just to try and get those some of those cells down a little bit further, but I don't want to stretch them out of shape. I might just torch down the bottom here, see if anything else wants to come up. I'm not going to torch over here because there's plenty, plenty there. So I'm quite liking the structure of these cells. Um, I haven't got too many of those really long, elongated or wobbly edged cells. I've got nice round cells with colours, inside colours, which is what I'm always going for. Take you in for a close up and see what you think. See if you can, let me know if you can tell the difference between these cells and cells from just flow troll pouring medium. Let me know if you think these cells are better. The other thing I could do is once I've pour, pulled the uh, cups down is torch straight away to get big cells, or to get cells up and then when I tilt they stretch and then there's no need to um, torch afterwards. It's a little caterpillar there I just noticed. So that's an option as well. But if you like the big cells and the little cells then you tilt you torch after you tilt. If you just want big cells, torch before you tilt. Right, I'll take you in for a close up. I'll just turn it around first so you can see the, the better side first. Well, I think that's the better side anyway. <laughs> the busier side, that's for sure. 